Welcome back to Sunrise Daily. Well, we're turning our attention now to uh, doing business, the ease of it, actually. Uh, we're joined this morning by Dr. Jumoke Oduwale, who is the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Trade and Investment. Thank you for coming on this morning. Well, this committee that was put in place, uh, you're about wrapping up uh, your functions now. So, where are we in the scheme of things? Okay. Um, thank you for having me again. The Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council, it's actually a two-year, the mandate is for two years, uh, but in January, the council approved uh, on the 21st of February that we go ahead with the 60-day action plan. It's a quick intervention aimed at really triggering the system into a reform mindset. So the last 60 days, after doing scoping in January and discussing back and forth, we agreed on specific indicators, specific areas that we would work on for 60 days and things we would push, sort of quick wins and then after 60 days we reassess where are we, what were we able to achieve. Okay, so mm. these quick wins are the ones that uh, when, I don't know, is it like a committee report that will be submitted in terms of the kind of actions you require to take? Um, no, it's actually organic, it's a live document, it's working targets with deadlines, with responsibilities, with accountability. Um, so it's not a kind of ending up with a report. Okay. It's more like telling you what has been done and the impact it will have or has already had. So what, what are these quick wins, for instance? Okay, um, I can take you through, first of all, the eight areas. Okay. Um, starting a business, I think that's one that a lot of people um, talk about because it's just the first port of call for businesses, especially SMEs. So starting a business was technically about 10 days to incorporate a business in Nigeria, officially, if there's no problem, if everything goes according to plan. And the target that we set ourselves was to reduce it to 48 hours, two days. And there are a number of things that we were able to do that have already been completed. We were able to uh, have a name search portal so that you don't spend a lot of time trying to register a name that's so already... So you go to the portal, type in the, the name you'd like to register? Yes, mm -hmm. and you see whether the, it exists already. Because when the, when the whole system was manual, sometimes you send in a name and then you're sent back, that name is taken, you send in another name, you're yeah. sent back. So that saves some time. And then you can then re reserve the name on the portal. So that was another step, like immediately you search the name and you find it, you can reserve it. And then back to back really, we did an interface with FIRS for the stamp duties to be able to be paid on the website also. And then we consolidated, there were about seven forms that needed to be filled, we consolidated into one form online. Um, I'm not going to paint an overly rosy picture, it's work in progress. The portal does still have some challenges, um, uptime. Um, usability, but it's definitely a lot of work has been done over the last 59 days. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. and um, it's work in progress. CAC is working very hard and we're pushing very hard. We've been getting feedback from the public. CAC has had stakeholder engagements. I was there as well to support them. And they've had a lot of feedback from the users of the platform and they've taken those on as well. How, how so does this uh, <coughs> impact on Nigeria as an investment destination? Yeah, so when, you are, when it's easy for businesses, for entrepreneurs to register businesses, that's really the first step in formalizing. You have an idea, you register it. That's really the birth of a company, the birth of an idea. So the easier it is for you to be able to do that in a business climate, the more people are inspired to do business. But if it's very difficult, people just hang back with their ideas, and then they go to the grave with the ideas. So that's why it's an important if we have to look at this at a quarterly basis, what would you expect to see, let's say, by the uh, Q3 or Q4? Would you see more investments or interests build up uh, in Nigeria? Which sectors, for instance? Um, so if I have to look at this, so this particular intervention, this now going back to the bigger picture, this intervention is for the entire economy. It's a systemic change to drive SMEs, which are really the engine of the economy, because they employ up to 80% and they contribute about 50% of GDP. Now, if you can get this, for instance, staying with starting a business, if you can get it down to 24, 48 hours, a lot more people, younger people, 
people still in paid employment will be encouraged to just start a business and have a second income, employ one or two people to run something while you're doing something else. So it's a, it's a quick win, it's a jump starting. Um, what, it, what it takes really, in, in other economies, sometimes you're done in minutes, just totally online. This is one of our quick fixes in that you can get it down to about 48, 24 hours without legislative change. So by Q3, Q4, we want to see a situation where we've amended some of the laws. For instance, the CAMA needs amending, and we've been working on that already with the section of business law, MBA, um, with the National Assembly. There's some other legislative provisions that need to be adjusted to make things even easier for companies in Nigeria. You know, part, part of what a uh, lot of people say is while they're starting businesses is, I know, the big one, tax. Uh, depending on the state you're in, they could suffocate you with different taxes, and in many cases it's multiple. Yeah. So what is being done about that? Well, so the first thing that we did to try and make it easier is that, okay, when you're registering your business, you can pay for your stamp duties online. And the next uh, step that we're adding to that is that you should be able to get your TIN number, your tax identification number at the same time as you're birthing the business. And what this does is, if you're registered immediately, you don't have to wait six months, or it's not at the point when your business starts doing well. You know, your affairs are tidied from day one. Because what happens to a lot of SMEs is, they just start a business, they continue rolling along, and then when they start doing better, then you find out you want to go for a loan, you want to do something with the state, you want to do something federal government, or, or an established company asks you, where's your tax clearance for the year? then you need to tidy up, and maybe you need to tidy up two, three years backwards. So it's easier when you start on time. Now speaking of, of multiplicity of taxes, what we're trying to do um, is first of all make filing easier. When you have e-filing, it's much easier for companies to just pay the thing. You know, if it's not tedious, then you're encouraged to do it. And if you know that the assessments are fair, um, then you're encouraged to do it. But also, when you know that it's like a lump sum. I think one of the things that irritates businesses is when you have like 50-something taxes, small amounts here and there. So we're trying to work with FIRS and state governments to make sure that some of these payments are consolidated. That's one thing that can really help. I don't think uh, taxes in Nigeria are prohibitive. I don't think when you look at corporate tax in other jurisdictions, we're not doing badly, but I think the ease of payment, the systemic issues, if you can pay a tax once in a year instead of paying it 12 times, why not? If you can pay consolidated taxes, state and federal, and then it's split back end between, say, LIRS and FIRS, then it's easier than the company having to take that burden of dealing with. Mm. The, uh, figures, the figures are showing that uh, we're, we're slowly moving out of recession, you know, and uh, possibly we'll have a result by Q4, whether or not we're out of recession completely, if we have the two back-to-back uh, -back, uh, uh, positive growth indication, uh, indicators for the economy. But uh, looking at that and uh, what you have done, how is that going to work, your work that you've done and the figures that we're expecting getting out of recession? How will this uh, give a projectile, a forecast of the impact of what you are doing uh, as against the immediacy of getting out of recession? Yeah. 